Hey guys, welcome to PatternLab.London. I'm Ralph, and in this week's episode, I'm going to show you, or we're going to basically start constructing, sorry, pattern cutting and constructing this really rather lovely, let's say, bikini beach cover-up for our holiday, which is coming up in, well, it's tomorrow. We're flying at 4 a.m. tomorrow. Um, so I haven't got a huge amount of time to do this. So this is basically one of three different um, beach cover-ups that we're doing. So we've already done the poncho. Um, we're doing this one here, and we've actually already done the shirt, but we're going to do the shirt tutorial um, when we come back from holiday, so we haven't got much time. Um, so yeah, one of these three here. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to, um, let's say, use Pattern Lab and Francesca's individual or unique measurements, put them into our system, into our profile page. From that, we'll then automatically generate blocks, basic blocks that fit her shape perfectly. And then from that, we'll take those blocks into Adobe Illustrator and we'll pattern cut them into this design. And this is a very, very simple design, um, so it shouldn't take too long and shouldn't take too long to construct either. And then hopefully when we're finished, we should have this really beautiful garment. And the one thing that's really special about this garment is essentially it's just a long line kimono coat but we're using this sort of like drawstring um, around the waistline so basically it can be either like a, a beautiful nice cover up that's just very simple as a coat or if you pull the drawstring quite tight it basically comes a bit like a bolero and it hangs down the back so it can be quite an interesting uh, let's say transitional piece. So I want this to transition from let's say daytime on the beach or by the swimming pool to maybe something in the evening that looks a little bit sort of like high-end. So that's why we're going for this really beautiful Japanese ikat cotton and if you've been following the blog recently you'll um, explain or I explain a little bit what ikat cotton is all about and why it is so lovely. Um, but yeah so it should be really beautiful. So let's get started. Okay so this is my lineup of my bikini beach cover-up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, this one, because it's the one I'm going to be working on, which is the long line, or long coat I'm calling it. Let's just copy it. And actually what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove... I just want the line art version of this, so let's just uh, ungroup it and release these clipping masks. In fact, let's just get rid of that. 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 Okay, here we go, probably should have done this before, but that's fine. Also, if you want to know how to actually create these beautiful digital illustrations in Adobe Illustrator, then we have a tutorial for you, and it's actually posted on this page, on this blog page. If you're on YouTube, then just simply click the link in the description, and it will take you to that blog page. Okay, so first what I want to do is, I'm just going to simply copy this image, the line art. Let's then create a new document. create a new document and then let's just make this centimeters because obviously uh, I need to set up in centimeters because I we're gonna be drafting this full-scale pattern and I use centimeters to draft you could use inches otherwise and let's just paste that in and let's just place that at the top of the page and this just gives us a bit of a an insight into what it is that we're actually going to be pattern cutting oops and we have lost hang on we're getting there uh, illustration Adobe Illustrator can be a little bit tricky sometimes, that's why the tutorials are really helpful. I probably should have prepared this, but you know what, it's always fun to see, isn't it? Well, I'm assuming that. Okay. So this is our, uh, let's say, illustration, and let's just start creating our pattern. So I'm just basically going to open up Pattern Lab. Here we go. Okay, so I've logged in. Once again, let's go to our profile. So I've already added Francesca's measurements. So let's go to Francesca UK 10. Um, yeah, I've already added her measurements into our profile page, which means I can draft using her measurements to create blocks that accurately fit her or perfectly fit her. Um, yeah, also we have tutorials that show you how to do each measurement. And we also have a general overall tutorial that shows you how to do every single measurement uh, required. So yeah, once we've filled in all of our measurements, we're then going to start drafting our block using the pattern lab. We're using the lab. So we're going to go for bodice and we're going to go for torso. Okay, so we want a really big long line block here. As you can see, it's really long. We want to make it a bit longer. So let's just go next. I'm going to go for the fit. And so I'm going to go for no way shaping because essentially it doesn't really have any way shaping. We're going to use this drawstring to create a way shaping. Sorry, I meant there. So yeah, let's go for no way shaping. And we're going to go for custom. And let's just go for a bust ease of about 12 centimeters. It's going to be quite large. It's not going to be too large. So the bust ease is just going to change 
the see the distance between these two points giving us a nice lovely straight block and I'm gonna leave the hippies just as nothing at the moment so we have a nice straight block next we have the length and we're gonna go for floor length because essentially our illustration isn't floor length but we want to make it slightly shorter but it's certainly longer than knee so we're kind of in between somewhere here we're like kind of ankle length so let's just go floor uh, and let's go next <clears throat> and then we're going to go for no seam on the front and here we're going to go for what should we go for it doesn't really matter because we're going to be taking it out anyway let's go for straight perfect actually let's go for French nope we're going to go for straight yeah okay <clears throat> so next what we're going to do is we're going to go for the back block no seam and we're going to keep it at mid shoulder and this is so we're slowly kind of getting there let's go for the sleeve now the sleeve is included in this block but we're not really going to be using a standard set in sleeve we're going to be using more of a kimono sleeve so I'm just going to leave this as is we're going to, go to purchase oh the fit hang on uh, okay we had to specify something for the hip so let's just put in I'm not bothered by the hip at all so let's just put in four for now just click next <coughs> Great stuff. See, as long as the um, the uh, the busties is larger than the, the hippies, then it'll create a nice straight block. Let's go purchase. And then I'll go for the e-pattern. The e-pattern is the digital downloadable, um, editable version of your pattern. So we can edit it in Adobe Illustrator. And the PDF pattern is essentially the paper version. So you can print it out on a range of different page formats. So A4, A3, A2, A1, A0, also, or also US letter. But we're going to be uh, amending this in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to go for the e-pattern. I'm going to add to cart. Once again, I am an administrator, so I don't actually have to pay for this pattern. So let's just go click I have read the terms and conditions, click confirm. And then once you've had your payment, you can then obviously um, edit and preview your download. Okay, so this is my pattern created with Pattern Lab and obviously Francesca's uh, unique or individual measurements. And it's looking fantastic. So I'm just simply going to download this. And I'm going to save it to my desktop, and let's just call it Francesca Long Coat Basic Blocks. And it's an SVG. Let's worry about that. Let's click Desktop, and let's just click Save. Okay, so I can now navigate away from uh, Pattern Lab. And let's just go back to our board here. And what I'm going to do is basically simply just open this up. So go to my desktop. Where is it? Francesca Blocks. Let's just zoom out, and here is our pattern looking fab. And what we'll do is I'm just simply going to copy and paste this to my... Uh, let's just make these slightly larger so you can see them. Or maybe slightly less. There we go. I'm just going to simply pick these up, copy and paste them um, onto... <laughs> lots of things going on here. Paste them onto this page that I set up obviously with my um, illustration and this is essentially where we're going to start pattern cutting um, this beautiful coat. Now I'm not going to show you exactly how we do this pattern um, because we're going to use that for a completely different tutorial. Uh, so this is just, I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of the actual finished pattern um, once it's obviously been completed because it's going to take uh, about 45 minutes to um, actually make this pattern from these basic blocks. But essentially, as I mentioned, we're going to create a tutorial that should be at the bottom of this blog post, um, another video that shows you in detail how we transformed these basic blocks into this lovely finished pattern. If you're on YouTube, then just simply follow the link in the description. That should take you to the blog post page where you can find that tutorial. Anyway, let's go to the finished pattern, which is here. Okay, so let me just give you a little bit of an overview of how this garment was actually constructed. And as you can see here, let's just highlight um, the original basic block. Let's make it blue. Okay, great. You should hopefully be able to see that. Okay, so this is our initial basic block in blue. So all we did was, um, so the block was essentially floor length. So we just simply removed about 5 cm to pull up the front of the block. In fact, that's the back of the block, sorry. So we've removed about 5 cm from the back. So the back is slightly longer. We've added this lovely chevron detail. The side seam, we've made sure these are both the same. And then at the front, we've taken it about 10 centimeters above the, um, let's say, the floor length. And so let's just also have a look. Okay, so here you can see we just simply measured from the centre back neck or even from the side neck point and we've measured the length that we want this sleeve to be. And so essentially the length of the sleeve is from this point to this point, which is 60 centimetres, okay? And this piece here is the cuff and this will essentially fold back on itself. So the length of the sleeve would be 
from this point, because that's our fold line, or the actual end of the sleeve, from here to the side neck point. Okay, so this is essentially our cuff, and we're folding this over. This is our actual sleeve, which is a panel all, all in itself. Because if we wanted to maybe make this like a, sorry, maybe make this like a contrast color, maybe a black or a pink or whatever, we have the option of doing that. Um, and this is obviously going to be the body color or the beautiful Japanese cat. We also have this lovely collar, um, which we've created very simply uh, just by, so here is our pattern here. We simply cut it from the neckline, from this side neck point, and we've taken it all the way down to the base here. And then we've just simply added this collar and the distance of the collar is, or the width of it is six centimeters. So we just added a six centimeter straight collar to this. We've carried on that chevron at the bottom. And we've also added, so we have a notch here, as you can see. And essentially this measurement here is the back measurement. And we've just simply tagged this measurement here onto the, uh, let's say, end of our collar. Let's move that back into position. Perfect. And with the back block, essentially, all we've done here is, uh, we've actually used the front only block and all we've done is simply raised or dropped it from this line here by two centimeters and just drawn that line in just to create a very basic back neckline. This garment is not very fitted. It is a very loose fitting garment. So we don't have too much to worry about when it comes to constraining these existing blocks. But it does give us some idea in terms of the actual, uh, let's see, the ease allowance that's gone into them. In other words, how wide these garments are and how loose fitting it is. And also when it comes to the neckline positioning, the width of the neckline and also the length of the garment. Okay, so it does certainly help. Let's just move that back into position. Uh, and also we have our little drawstring here. So this is the channel, uh, which goes all the way around the garment, this one here. It's going to go all the way around the garment, um, and it will basically house a rope, which we can then obviously pull tighter or loosen off to create that really lovely, let's say, gathering effect and create that bolero at the very end. So this is the actual finished, finished pattern. Um, so as you can see here, what we've done is we've essentially duplicated this. So the arm, or the sleeve, instead of having two pieces that are joined together at the shoulder seam, we're just simply adding on the top piece to the bottom piece. And so this is just going to fold over to the back. And same with the cuff as well. So it's very much like a kimono. And then we have our front, and we have our back, and we have the channel. And yeah, so very, very simple stuff. And obviously, we've added notches as well. So the two notches here indicate the front. And obviously that's the same for the cuff here. And the single notch indicates where these two match and the single notch indicates where it matches at the back as well. Um, this is also the same with our, um, our channel. So we've basically marked in notches uh, pretty much. Let's have a look, sorry, it goes there. There we go, let's add that on. So we've marked notches just essentially where this line would cross the uh, channel and also where the side seam, which is this bit here, would cross that channel, and same for the back. So it just makes it a little bit simpler, and we've also added a 1cm seam allowance. And once again, this will all be detailed in that tutorial, uh, and we've also added grain lines as well. This gives us the option for a bias grain, if we have enough material, and this gives us the option for straight grain. But so this is just an overview. If you want to watch that tutorial, then just simply go to the bottom of this blog post and we'll show you exactly how we actually created this garment. And essentially you could do it yourself um, just by simply obviously going to Pattern Lab, uh, creating your profile, adding your measurements, and then creating those blocks, um, pulling them into Adobe Illustrator, and then obviously following that tutorial. Anyway, let's move on. So once we have our finished pattern, which is this one here, we then just take it into our um, Pattern Lab A4 PDF templates, which is essentially a series of pages um, that you can piece together um, so basically, you place your pattern, as you can see, we've placed our pattern on these A4 pages, like so. And we've just removed any pages that we didn't actually need, okay? And so essentially, when we print this out, we're printing out a full-scale pattern, but um, on individual A4 pages, which we can then cut and then piece together. It's essentially the new uh, indie sewing pattern norm, I guess, is these digital downloadable PDF patterns. So yeah, once this is uh, essentially created, we can then save this as a PDF and we can print it out, we can share it online, we can give it to friends, whatever. Uh, yeah, so what we're going to do next is we're going to basically print that out onto paper, I'm going to piece it together and then we're going to start the construction process and then we should give a bit of an overview of this finished garment so you get to actually have a look at what it looks like. Now we're not twirling this up at all, we're going straight to material. It is a very, very simple pattern so there shouldn't be too much to change and also we are very limited on time but you should essentially make a twirl first and then ensure that those measurements are correct and your fit is correct. But yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look, let's continue.
Okay, so this is our finished off, uh, let's say, long coat kimono bikini beach cover up, it's a long word. Um, and yeah, it's looking really nice. I'm absolutely loving the Japanese ikat, I think it's fantastic. Um, obviously, the length is quite nice as well. This mannequin is a little bit larger or taller than Francesca, she's not like six foot. So, this should actually come very, very close to the ground, so it should be a really beautiful long coat. Um, so, yeah, I think it's worked out really well. Um, so there's lots of things we probably do to this to maybe change it up. So perhaps we could have like maybe um, the black collar and the black tipping on the cuff. Or maybe have like a blue or a pink, something that kind of like brings the colours out. We could even roll back the cuff. And then on the inside have maybe like that colour pop as well, which would be quite cute. Um, but yeah, essentially I've made a little bit of a mistake here. So basically I should have attached the cuff to the coat afterwards rather than uh, to the body and then stitch out the side seam because that's why we've got this little seam detail here. So obviously if we change that, then we can have that colour pop on the inside. The one really lovely thing about this coat is the whole point is that I wanted it to transition from let's say daytime on the beach or by the pool to like nighttime. And so uh, this is very, very comfortable, very easy sort of like kind of concept. You could even like maybe like tie it together. It depends how you want to do it. But I wanted to, let's say, create something a little bit more dynamic for the evening. So essentially the idea is that we basically draw these drawstrings. Well, there we go. And you create more of like a kind of like bolero-esque sort of like style jacket. And then obviously you'd have like a nice beautiful dress underneath or something. So yeah, this like creates a, a slightly different aspect to the dress. So it kind of transitions quite well. And it kind of creates this really beautiful like little train at the back. So this bolero top and like a train at the back, which is really cute. And let me turn it around for you so you can have a look at all the other angles. Okay, so this is our kimono from the side. And uh, yeah, as I said, you have this really beautiful bolero shape. It like kind of comes in. It's got this beautiful train as well. You've got these like little let's say the ropes that also kind of tassel or drag as well. You could always maybe, let's say, tie it at the side, just like here, just to create like a different effect if you don't want to have those dragging on the floor too much. And yeah, I think it's really cute. And then obviously we have the back as well. So once again, we have this really lovely ruching detail at the back, and we can maybe like separate this or spread it in or style it up a little bit. We have this lovely train with a little peak at the bottom, and then we have our sleeves as well. So yeah, I think it's looking really nice, and I can't wait to next get some accessories and style this up and like get some colours going on. So I think with Francesca's skin once again the colours will pop. So it should be really nice. We also have one more uh, kimono, or sorry, bikini beach cover up to make which is the third one which is like the shirt dress. Unfortunately we don't have time to blog about it because I have to make it now and we're going tomorrow. But we'll basically demonstrate that when we get back off holiday. Otherwise, yeah, really happy, really impressed, really pleased. I think it's worked out well considering we didn't do any toile work for it at all. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next blog post. Take care.